chapter five and six uh, form the last chapters in this unit. And the first one, chapter five, is about the instruments of the orchestra. Chapter six picks up the other instruments, keyboards, voice, wind ensemble instruments, electronic instruments, popular instruments, even some um, exotic instruments from other countries and things. The goal here for you is to become familiar with the names, images, and sound production methods of each of these instruments by family. So if we look here in your book, it says the first family in the orchestra is called string instruments and it goes through and says they are the violin, the viola, the cello, the double bass. And then they even talk about the harp, um, which is different but still included there. And then it goes through sound production, how do they modify their basic color or timbre, and how they regulate the pitch, how to get high and low pitches, how they start and stop sounds. So to summarize chapter five for you, string family, brass family, woodwind family, percussion family. You have to be able to answer the following questions and know the knowledge in the following ways. In each family, for instance, strings, you're gonna to have to say, well, what are they? So violin, viola, cello, double bass, and harp, okay? You should be able to arrange them from who plays the highest medium and lowest sounds if they have an order like that mentioned. How do they make their basic sound? In this case, the basic sound is to draw a horsehair bow across the strings. And that vibration goes down through the bridge into the sound post and makes the top of the instrument vibrate back and forth like a speaker. How do they change pitch? Well, if you put your finger down on a string, at various places on the fingerboard, it shortens the length of the string, making it vibrate faster, giving higher pitches. And the different strings are pitched at different levels. How do they start and stop the sound? Well, they draw the string, the bow, sorry, across the string, and they stop doing that to stop the sound. Is there anything else about it? Yes, they modify their color in a couple different ways. They can pluck their strings as opposed to bowing them. They can use different kinds of bowing techniques in terms of how hard uh, they attack the string and how much pressure they put on it. Also, how fastly they move the bow across. And then there are some other special effects like plucking the string hard so it snaps back to the fingerboard. Um, you should be able to answer all those questions for strings, brass, woodwinds, and percussion. Now in chapter six, there are lots of other instruments and families and groups but we're only going to be interested on the test for keyboard instruments, which is the piano, the harpsichord, and the pipe organ. But you should still be able to answer the same questions you did for these families for the keyboard instrument as well. Now there's another way of classifying instruments that's not mentioned explicitly in this version of the textbook. In earlier editions it was there, I'm not sure why they pulled it out. But um, how the instrument makes its basic sound Sound production is another way to think of instruments. And we have four main categories. Aerophones. Aerophones are any instrument that uses air to create vibration. So a saxophone is a woodwind, but it's also an aerophone. It makes air go past a mouthpiece and a cane reed, and those vibrate together and make sound. A trumpet is not part of the woodwind family. It's a brass instrument, but it also makes air push up through lips and make those lips vibrate or buzz back and forth. And that's also an aerophone. When you think about it, your vocal cords, even though it seems like they'd be chordophones, are actually aerophones. There's no cords in there. It's just pieces of meat and muscle tissue in there that your body forces air up through, okay? Pipe organ would be another example of an aerophone. So, aerophones. Chordophones are any instrument that makes it sound by plucking, striking, or ringing a chord, string, or wire. So, of course, the string instruments, including the harp, would be chordophones. The guitar would also be a chordophone. The piano is a chordophone because when you push the key down, a series of levers makes a hammer covered in felt strike down on metal wires. Now, a membranophone is anything that has a membrane or skin that could be rubbed, smack, hit, something like that. Even if today's modern equivalent is made out of plastic or some kind of poly 
material that's not actually a membrane anymore, any kind of drum, um, tambourine, kettle drums, snare drums, toms, those are all membranophones. Idiophones, it's a funny sounding name. Um, it's really actually anything that you hit, smack, strike, um, vibrate, rattle, that is none of the other ones, especially membranophones. So for instance, a kettle drum, a timpani, is a membranophone because it has a skin or a plastic skin now over the top that you hit. But a xylophone, which is made of either poly uh, synthetic or uh, rosewood or some actual piece of wood um, blocks that are tuned, that would be an idiophone. It doesn't have a membrane. You're just striking a piece of wood when you hit the keys. Um, same thing for a triangle, same thing for cymbals, mostly percussion in that regard. So in addition to thinking of them by family group, woodwinds, brass, percussion, strings, keyboards, those kind of things, you should also be able to classify them by how they make their sound, if they're aerophones, chordophones, membranophones, or idiophones.